Hello, hello! In this video we're going to take a look at the best methods of setting up and configuring FSX to get the simulator running the best it can on your computer. When people talk about tweaking FSX, or any game for that matter, they're talking about changing the settings to find that optimum balance between the game looking pretty but also running smoothly. Now a quick word on tweaking, it is a bit of a dark art and there's no hard and fast rules on how to do it. Some of the things that I talk about on this video may work wonders for one person and have little to no effect for someone else. So I'm just going to look at some of the most common things that you can do to get your simulator running better. Also the methods that I'll cover in this video are for the original boxed version of FSX, not FSX Steam Edition, however you can still tweak that version of the game. So first things first, we need a way of measuring the performance of the game. A game's performance is most commonly measured by its FPS, or frames per second. This is how many individual images the game displays on your monitor each second. If there's a low number, the game will appear to run in slow motion or stutter. In FSX, you can press Shift plus Z when you're in the plane, and this will give you some additional information up in the top left corner. If you press Shift Z twice, you'll get an FPS counter. It's widely accepted that 30 frames per second is sort of the benchmark figure. Any lower than this and you'll begin to notice the drop in performance, and anything above that is just brilliant. Ok, so where to begin? Well first off, if you're going to be hardcore about things, you'll probably want to do a complete reinstall of FSX and any add-ons that you have. This ensures that the game is in a default state on your computer. Then it's good practice to run the game once just to make sure that everything's working and then after that it's good to fully restart your computer. Once you're back up and running, jump into the simulator and then jump into the settings screen and start to adjust things to your preferred settings. Once you've done that on all five tabs, I'd recommend jumping into a plane and starting a flight at a big city airport. I personally use London Heathrow when I'm setting up my sim. So once the flight loads up, you'll be able to see straight away how your frame rate is doing. It might even be worth taking off and going for a quick flight to get a look at the city landscape as well. If your FPS is good, above 30 for example, then you've not really got much to do. If you're happy with how everything looks and if it's running smoothly, then that's mission accomplished. If you find that the performance is below what you would like, then there's a few things that you can change in the settings. So a couple of these settings have been highlighted by the flight sim community as performance killers, settings which significantly reduce the performance of the simulator. So one of the first and easiest things to remedy is the AI traffic. Now of course it's great to have other planes and little cars and boats driving around, but how often are you really going to be spending time looking at them? I personally have cars and boats turned right down and normally I have the AI aircraft at about 50%. At the moment I've got them turned off because they get in the way when I'm trying to record these videos. The good news is that AI add-ons are designed to be much more friendly with regards to simulated performance, plus they offer a much better experience than the default AI aircraft. So if having air traffic is important to you, then that is an option. The other massive performance killer is the Autogen scenery settings. This relates to the 3D buildings and trees that you see all over the place. Scenery complexity relates to the types of buildings that you can see. At its lowest setting, you may only see one building type, but at its highest you'll have big buildings, small buildings, houses, etc. etc. The big hit comes with the density setting. This controls the amount of buildings that you can see. So at its lowest, you'll have a couple of buildings dotted around the landscape, but at its highest, and you'll see buildings sprawling as far as the eye can see. So a good rule of thumb is to leave the complexity high and adjust the density to improve the performance. The next big hitter is probably the cloud settings. Again, density is the setting that you'll want to focus on. If you're really struggling, then there is an option to use simple clouds, which will take a bit of strain off your system. Once you've adjusted these settings, jump into a flight again and see how you go. 
The idea is that if you can get FSX running smoothly at a busy airport in a big city, then it'll run smoothly anywhere in the world. So from that, you can then just keep adjusting the settings back and forth until you find a nice balance that keeps you at about 30 frames per second or higher. Once you're happy that you found a nice balance, close down FSX. The next step will take place outside of the game and we're going to get a little bit more technical. So we're going to look at changing some settings in an FSX configuration file. Unfortunately, this file is hiding on your computer, so we need to do a little bit of digging to find it. First, you'll need to open up Windows Explorer. Then, under the Organize menu, click on Folder and Search Options. This will give you a new window. If you click on the View tab at the top, and then have a look at the list of options below. You'll want to find the option which says Hidden Files and Folders, and make sure that this is set to Show Hidden Files and Folders. Then click on Apply and OK to close the window. So now we've uncovered the file, but we still need to find the darn thing. Um, so I'm going to show you its location in Windows 7, but I'll also give you the directions in the other versions of Windows below. So in Windows Explorer, if you click on your C drive, go into the Users folder, and then click into your personal user profile. Next, you want to click onto the App Data folder. Now you see how this icon is faded. This is one of the hidden folders which is usually invisible. That's why we needed to change that setting before. In the App Data folder, click into the Roaming folder, and then click into Microsoft, and then finally click into FSX. And here you will find the fsx.cfg, the main config file for FSX. So there should be a text file that you can simply open and view in Notepad. So the structure of this config file is actually quite easy to understand. You have different sections of settings. Each section has a header in square brackets. So for example we have the job scheduler at the top. And then every line underneath that is relating to that section. So now that we have that config file open, we can start making some changes. So first I'm going to th talk about a couple of tweaks which I think are essential to have. So the first couple can be found under the display section. The first one you want is wide view aspect equals true. If the line doesn't exist under the display, then simply type in on a new line, making sure that it's in the display section of settings. What this tweak does is change the aspect ratio so that the instruments and panels look normal on widescreen monitors. They don't look stretched or squashed in any way. The other tweak to check for is a line which reads texture bandwidth mult equals 40. This is also under the display section. I'm not sure exactly what this does, but you want to make sure that the number on the end reads 40, 40. It should be set to this already because that's the default number. The last essential tweak can be found under the graphics section. I think this one you need to add manually, so type in high mem fix equals 1, all capital letters. This helps the simulator work better with the RAM memory in your system. So you can't really go wrong with those three. Once you're done, save the file and you're ready to go. Now there's a couple more tweaks which are commonly used, but I would treat these as optional. This first one only applies if you have add-ons which have high resolution or HD textures. So under the graphics section, you should have a line that reads texture max load. By default, this is set to 1024, but you can also use 2048 or 4096. This allows the sim to display HD textures. It's worth noting that if the simulator has the default 1024 resolution te textures, they will remain in place. Changing this number doesn't change the quality of the default textures. It simply opens the door for HD textures to be used to their full potential. The next tweak is the LOD radius, which can be found under the terrain heading. So if you imagine the plane you're flying has a bubble around it, any objects or textures within this bubble are more detailed because they're closer to the plane. Anything outside of this bubble has a more blurry, simpler texture to take some load off the computer. 
This LOD radius number allows you to change the size of that bubble so you can change how many detailed objects you see closer to you. By default this is set to 4.5 and some people in the flight sim community reckon that you can go up to about 6.5 before it starts to seriously impact performance. Another thing to note with this tweak, any time you adjust a setting in FSX it will automatically reset this number back to 4.5 so just be aware of that if you're playing with the settings. The next tweak is a popular one, it's called the buffer pool tweak. Under the buffer pools heading there will be either one or a couple of lines which say pool size or use pools. You need to set these values to zero. What this does is tell the simulator to transfer data directly between your processor and your graphics card, which improves the performance a little. The next one can be found under the main heading and the line you're looking for is fiber frame time fraction. This tells the simulator how much time to spend loading scenery and textures. By default it's set to 0 0.33. The lower this number is set to, the faster the textures will load. However, there is a risk that they won't get loaded properly. I've seen people set this as low as 0 0.1. A word of warning though, never set this number to 0 because the textures and the scenery will not load. Also be aware that some add-on scenery needs this to be set to a certain number. I think I read somewhere that scenery by a company called Orbex needs to have this set to a minimum of 0 0.2 for example. So there you have several of the most common tweaks available for FSX. If you have any difficulties and find that the game doesn't work quite as you'd expect after tweaking, you can simply delete the fsx.cfg file and then run the game again. This will automatically create a new config file with the default settings. And if all goes completely tits up, then just simply reinstall the game again. So I hope this helped any of you out there who are wanting to get FSX running well. The next video will be on V speeds, which will come in handy if you're looking at flying more complex aircraft. Hope to see you there. Many thanks for watching, and I'll catch you later.